Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, for a Patreon cast for the week of November the 5th, 2022, we have a best of three featuring Jadong and JYJ. Uh, game one is here on Polypoid. Top right, our white Terran, it is JYJ. And in the bottom left, it's our dude Jadong, who needs no introduction. Now, JYJ took fifth place in ASL 13. He was first place in his group, which did feature Jadong. And he took two games in a row off of Jadong in the group stages. So I think this is a very good matchup for JYJ. He can hold his own against Jadong, the Zerg Terror. So, again, this is Polypoid, a giant four-player map. It is a ladder map, which you've seen a lot. And SCB Scouting, here is JYJ. RJB sent me a few... Oh, this is a proxy barracks. A few best of threes. So I figured I'd cast them and see what the reception is. Because, I don't know, I don't think... There are very many short games on this channel. But as a part of a best of three... Eh? Eh? With maybe a long game in there? It's palatable for you guys. So give me some feedback patrons. Again, if you're watching this, the first week of November 2022, thank you very much for supporting me at patreon.com slash falcon paladin for at least a buck a month. I appreciate your support out there. It allows you to see this a whole month before anybody else does. If you're watching this in like December 2022, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I'm here six times a week with Brood War content. All right. All right. Hatch first in is our guy Jadong. Terror the Overlord, scout in the wrong direction, but won't get shot out of the sky by a marine in the process. And it's a four-player map, so proxies aren't very common because they're hard to pull off. And that's exactly what JYJ is trying to do here. And against a hatch first of our guy Jadong, he might get away with it. That said, this SCV looking for an Overlord. Oh, that's so good. Oh, sees it! Sees it! Knows where the Overlord is coming from. Immediately. Go, go, go. Uh, immediately. Ahem! <clears throat> Ahem! Immediately sends his marine to where Jadong is. Okay, fine. We're, we're just gonna hang out in the middle of the map here. It's fine. Hey, we're moving. This is like bunk. You can bunker this. That pool is not done yet. Bunker, 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 bunker. Bunker, do it. Bunker, yes, okay. Bunker in position where the Overlord sees it, but not... Whatever. Drones have to come off the line. Oh, some of them have gas. In their mouths, too. Just buying time. It was that SCV for these Marines to show up. Killed one of the drones. Okay. But drones are faster than Marines are. And they hit them pretty hard, considering that they don't have guns. They just shoot acid on them. And it seems to work out pretty well. I mean, they're spined. It's like the Hydralisk problem, right? Are they really shooting spines or are they spitting on them? It sure seems like it's a spit, doesn't it? Bunker finishes. Oh, I don't know about this. Bunker finishes, and now there's a bunker for the Marine to fall back to. More Marines coming in because, of course, there are. But, oh, the surround, though. Oh, all right, that, yup, oh, J-Dong held. That's a hold. <laughs> oh, J-Y-J. He tried it. He made an effort there, but Overlord positioning really saved the day for J-Dong. Putting this guy here. He, I mean, I think he brought it back down to put it here, and he saw the bunker. And he was like, nice. That's really a big part of the Overlord's uh, jobs in the first part of the game, is recognizing that, uh, well, the potential of Barracks is real. Barracks proxy is real. And I'd argue this is, this is pretty much game over for JYJ in game one here, right? I mean, I don't know. It's a two-basing Zerg player. Yeah, he's only got 13 drones, but, like, all your Marines keep dying as soon as they pop out of these Barracks, and that can be good for the army supply. Not even a little bit. Look at this guy juking. I like, oh, and just Lair. This is Jadong being like, I don't need speed. I would get speed for my Lings in this situation. Good pullback on that wounded Ling, by the way. Oh, that guy dies too. He didn't have to die that fast. Either way, I think an SCV tried to scout up here and see what's going on, but got killed at the, at the ramp here by Lings. So that's cool. This barracks is under attack. SCVs are coming to try to save it, but oh, there's more Lings coming. Oh, there's a Marine popped out. Get in the bunker. Get in the bunker, Shinji. And he does. Ah! The bunker has a dude in it now, but a Ling gets into your base, and it's a Jadong Ling. It's the worst possible scenario that you could ever expect. All right, cool. So Spire's on the way. 
from Jadong, and uh, there's not a second gas here, so this is gonna be like, I don't know, four to five, maybe six mutalisks, probably closer to five would be my guess. Ling, just pick up that barracks and float it back to safety, dude. Seriously, though. Anyway, Terror the Overlord makes it all the way across here. That's right, Terry. Good job. Good job getting all the way over here without dying. Good spying happening here. Very impressed with you so far, my friend. Okay, so yeah, we're just saving up gas for Mutas. This stage, Daydong is not really working on much of else. He's got a second gas up. But it's late into the process of the spire constructing. So yeah, like I said, five. And then from there, sure, he can add on Mutas, but he's not making more than five at first go. It's uh, just player's choice, right? Zerg's choice there to see what's up. Now, the good news for JYJ is he does have a second base here, which all of a sudden he's feeling okay. Like, sure, he didn't kill this hatchery. He didn't kill really many drones there, but... I don't know. Yeah, five mutas and a sixth one got added on. So we got six mutas coming out. Where is your engineering bay, good sir? Senor. See, there it is. Senor JYJ has an engineering bay. He needs the turret construction to start immediately. Like, right the heck now. Because the turrets, uh, they don't take that long to build, but the mutas are on their way now. So turret construction needs to happen, and it's not happening, and it's freaking me out. Production tab says stim and range for marines, and... We can do this with bunkers, he says. By that, I mean there's not anything in the main base to protect your guys. Well, SCB comes out for a scout and sees that there are mutas coming. Excellent job there, SCB. On the scout, and here we go. Mutas from Jadong. Oh, now you're going to start turrets? Dude, come on. Your engineering bay has been done for a while, sir. You know what? It's working out for him, though. This isn't enough mutas to be incredibly scary. It's only six, and six just joined the party. Now the turrets are up. Dude, is this a game where JYJ is going to get away with a failed proxy and win the game anyway? That's the thing about Terran, man. They could cheese your butt and fail miserably at the cheese and then just win the game regardless. It's a little bit infuriating because I feel like if cheese doesn't work, you should just lose the game. But, you know, our guy JYJ here does not agree with that assessment at all. My professional assessment of how cheese should work. Range upgrade's not done for the Marines yet. It's fairly dis far distance away here, too. More Muta's coming to join the party. So, I mean, look, we've got five here. One has died, obviously. We're going to replace that one and add another one to it. So we have seven. We have seven Mutalisks. And three turrets up. I mean, three turrets is probably overkill for, oh, I guess it's eight now. Eight with a ninth one coming in. And a third base on the way in the bottom right. Loving that stuff. Yeah, all right. So look, nine mutas, right? The Marines are like, well, we've got stim now. So, and range. So how about you fight us? And the mutas are like, no, not interested. And by golly, the not interest continues. <laughs> I mean, they're stacked up and they're, you know, they're ready to rock here. I don't think they have any plus one attacks or anything. No, they don't have any attack or armor upgrades. Yo, we're going to 10. Okay, so 10 mutas. Going for metabolic boost, getting lurker aspect to defend that third base especially. And that's 11, man. We have an 11 muta stack here, which means these marines, your days are numbered. I love you, but you're in a lot of trouble, man. We're going SK Terran over here, though. Heck yes. We're going barracks, we're going factory, we're going starport. Going marines and tanks and science vessels. And a queen's nest is on the way from Jadong here at nine minutes. And what's kind of nice too about these best of threes is like, you don't know when this game's going to end. When does game two come up? I don't know. Right? So it's almost like it's all a lot of sneaky twofers is what the best of series are. Because... You can't just be like, oh, I clicked on this video and it's nine minutes long and obviously it's over in nine minutes because it's it's longer and the game's, this game's going to be over before game two starts. So it's, it's nice. It's nice to have a little bit more suspense, I think, in these best ofs. I don't know. You tell me. Tell me in the comments. I read every comment anybody ever makes on the channel, whether I respond to it. Mm -hmm, we'll see. But I definitely read them all. 
Yep, science facility on the way. I don't know. I think JYJ is doing fine. He's at 73 total supply to 64 for Jadong. But once the lurkers are out, there we go. Game changed. Game changed. It means the fourth base can be taken now without really too much fuss for the Zerg player. The Mutas, I think they got a Marine down here. Way to go, boys. This is really weird to me that he's making 11 Mutas but not getting any upgrades for them at all. Like, zero armor, zero attack upgrades. He's trying to pick off individual SCVs here. He's found a spot where he can harass without taking too many turret shots. But then he takes a lot of turret shots on the way out, and, yo, like two or three mutas died there. Not great, and all of them are pretty injured as a result. Was that worth? I would argue it was not worth, personally. But, you know, it's Jadong we're talking about. He took a risk. He's got a hive on the way. He's trying to keep the Terran player on the back foot. Make him worry about more mutalisk attacks, but uh, no, JYJ says, screw that. Let's move out. Let's move out and try to kill this guy. I know he's a legend. I know he's a god of Zerg. He can bleed, though. JYJ, he's legit. Don't know, don't know what else to tell you here. Other than he's really good at StarCraft. Yeah, I mean, look, that proxy barracks failed. It failed. It did. Oh, my greater spire. Oh, come on. Jada, <laughs> why? Mm, so Falcon comes up against the how many games has he ever cast? <laughs> Where guardians are made and the Zerg player wins. That's it. Those two conditions. Once they're met, does the Zerg player win that game? The answer is no. Very much not. No. Very much not. It's just way too much investment in gas into Guardians that could be going to Defilers, right? Or Ultralisks, or more Lurkers. All these things are better uses of gas than Guardians. I'm not even, I'm not memeing here. This is, yeah. If Jadong wins this thing, I'ma be shocked. Shocked out of my mind. Defiler Mount isn't done yet. This attack at the natural base could be pretty intense. Ooh, supply blocking, yep, that's a supply block on Jadong. Not good, but guess what? Are you gonna do it? You've got a Terran army on your front door. You're gonna use the gas on these? He's going to do it. Yep. There it is. He doesn't have enough gas to turn them all. He can make six guardians. There are 150 gas a piece. Whoa, he made a devourer, two, and one devourer. Okay. Fair, I guess. That's a stim. That's a defensive matrix. That's a go. That's a go, go, go. There's a couple, there's not even three Sunkins here. Scourge, no connections at all. Uh, lurker Spines are great though. Wow, that was incredible stuff. All right, so the Lurkers, say, again, see how great Lurkers are doing? And here come Los Guardians. They are doing some terrible work against these poor SCVs. They do force a flea of all the SCVs at the second base for the Terran, which he's not happy about. He'd like to have this mineral income, but it's not really available to him. At the moment, the turrets are getting wiped out. He's doing a great job not making the Guardians drift in, or not letting them drift into turret range, because they'll do that, because they're dumb. Science vessels are up. Do they have a radiate? The pre-split is here, though. Oh, he's boxer maneuvering that, or trying to. Then getting kind of distracted by this devourer. And then the mutas are getting hits off, but the boxer, this is the weirdest thing. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Several, okay, keep going. Keep boxer maneuvering. Dude, that's amazing. That is so hot. I'm not even sure if it counts as a boxer maneuver if you do it against guardians. Yep. Okay, so all the guardians are dead. Uh, how many kills you got, man? Five is actually a good number for you to have. Five is great. Uh, this devourer's got four kills. What? How does it have four kills? What's it? Oh, wait. It brought some kills over from when it was a mutilisk. Dude, that's what it was. No, trying to bust it in the natural base again is JYJ. No, says the Dark Swarm. Get out. Get out. Third base is up here for JYJ. This is a great game one. Holy smokes, this is a great game one. 94 to 90 supply. These Guardians. Okay, so we got two of them, but we're just going to radiate them individually now and call it good. Yeah, so they're, they're going to die. Science Vessel, save it. Oh, what a save. That was insane. I cannot believe he saved that. Okay, all right, that, pfft. yo, JYJ's legit. So Jadong says, well, I've got four bases, sort of. Let's get kindness plating. Let's get some Ultralisks out here and deal with this SK Terran. I don't, 
I think you blew your wad on Guardians, man. Although there's a lurker hiding in there. Oh, there's two lurkers hiding in there on top of each other. That's genius. So you can't target fire it because there's lings on it. Oh my gosh. And now there's Dark Swarm too, but Scourge hits. Oh, that's one Scourge hit. Oh, that's another Scourge hit, but not two on the same science vessel. So they're still alive. That's the trick here. Yeah. Oh, another attack from Taedong. Okay, this is big. Getting up into this third base. Killing this third base and protecting his own fourth would be... My gosh, such game-changing play here from Jadong, and it's Jadong. So Dark Swarm is up, Bunker in a lot of trouble here. SCV is trying to flee. These Lings, I'm not sure if they have Adrenal yet, but the high has been done for some time, so perhaps they do. Science Vessel's coming in to irradiate the Lurkers down at the fourth base, but the third base is a graveyard right now. JYJ does not have a third, and Jadong has a fourth. That's it. That's how this works. Consume that one, you dummy. Blah. He consumed and then died before casting anything. How embarrassing. Plague's on the way. Battlecruiser's coming in. So it's not SK Terran. It's the variety of SK Terran where it's Battlecruisers instead. Fair, I guess. Bit of engagement in the middle of the map here. Dark Swarm is up. Another Dark Swarm is up. Just get out of the Dark Swarm, man. You know how this works. Beautiful Dark Swarm lurker defense. Uh, by defense, I mean defense of this third base that Jade Long has called his own here. More science vessels are out. That's a beautiful irradiate on that defiler. This guy's just lost. He doesn't know what to do. Blah. Very, very dead. So two basing Terran versus four basing Zerg. That's the math right now here at 16 minutes. But not a great answer to battle cruisers unless you count these Scourge, which are a decent answer to BCs. Plus, Jidong's getting a fifth base over here at the 9 o'clock spot. So, I don't know. Yeah, that Scourge count is hefty. They want to kill these Science Vessels. I'm not even sure they know about the Battle Cruisers, honestly. But it'll work. It works either way. Do you want to kill a group of Science Vessels? Scourge. Do you want to kill some Battle Cruisers? Also Scourge. Very good. Also, Dark Swarm Hider is really good against PCs. Devour is not bad help either, actually. Dude, what? You're sending SCVs back into this war zone? Ow! 714 kills on that lurker? Are you kidding me? And then he's dead because he radiated, but he got 14 kills. That was worth for sure. We got more ultralisks on the way. Metasynaptic node getting researched. This is a honestly really good game one. But if JYJ can't get his third base back, I don't there's just not a path. Right? We talk about paths, right? Oh, he dropped in the main though. Plague Battle Cruisers as part of the battle into the side the main base! Are there enough? Well, the battle cruisers are having a wonderful time. Nothing is stopping them from making this work. Oh, hold position lurker does get killed, okay? Battle cruisers trying to kill this ultra lisk. It's kind of a. I would kill drones here. It seems like it's a better value. Oh, and then the spores finish. Well, I mean, look, the third base lander for JYJ. That's good stuff. Scourge. Oh, connecting. Why are they connecting? They shouldn't be connecting. Ah, GG. JYJ taps out game one. I mean, I don't think it really mattered. There were so many Scourge. It was like 137 ply for Jadong. He had five bases. Sort of a third base is up for JYJ. He was not winning that game. But I don't know. Maybe some better control on the Battle Cruisers would be nice. Just don't, don't, don't let the Scourge run into your face. You've, you've got lasers. But I guess the attack speed is pretty slow. Anyway, good attempts. I mean, I look, I feel kind of good because the Terran player who cheesed and failed at the cheese, did not win the game. It's a lot closer than I wanted it to be. So I'm a little bit conflicted on this one. But good job. Jadong gets the win in game number one here. You know, after getting 2 0 by JYJ in the group stage of ASL 13, he should feel pretty good about that. Anyway, nice. Let's get to game number two here. I think we covered everything that needed to happen here. Oh my gosh, it is a game, though, where Zerg got a win. And they made Guardians. So this, honestly, I'm not kidding. That might be the first game ever where a Zerg player I cast made Guardians and did that thing, right, too, where they have the Mutas and they're all injured, so just turn them into Guardians and get their HP back and harass this base. That's always what it is. Harassing, like, a third base or a, something that has some dead air space behind it. And it doesn't work. And it's a ton of resources spent. But, you know, four bases here, and the attack on the third was key for Jadong there. Right, getting the lings, the lurkers up there, killing a ton of SCVs, forcing the lift off, and this just never came back. And once your third base never comes back, uh, and you're on two bases as a Terran against Jadong when he's got five, 
It's not going to work. The end. So that's game one. I guess we'll check out the final score while we're here, right? I'm not... I haven't done a best of in a while, but 105,000 points there from Jadong, 81,000 from Fantasy. By Fantasy, I mean JYJ, also known as a Fantasy, which is hilarious. Got out produced by the Zerg, lost more stuff than the Zerg, and the Zerg player killed more Terran units than vice versa. Yeah, that's a problem. Resources here too, 34,000 and 26,000. That's your math. That's your day. That's your base count. That's your basic math. And that's a win. So that's game one. Let's move it. Move it, move it into game numero... Dos. Game number two is here on a Neo Sylphid top side. You know him. He's JYJ. And in the bottom right-ish, we've got Jadong, as well as Terry the Overlord. Hello, Mr. Terry. How are you feeling about Jadong's chances of winning this battle? <laughs> yes, I know. He is an excellent commander of Zerg players. And maybe he's going to 2-0 here against JYJ. Woof. Little bit of a burp there. Hmm. Drinking water while casting. Keeps your throat dry, but there are other side effects. Okay, so we've got a hallucinated Kakaru here. Into the fog of war. <laughs> and yeah, woof, Brood War. What a great game, right? 1998 is when this was released. Man, that is so, so, so very long ago, but still going strong. Woof. Oh, that reminds me. I saw <laughs> somebody posted a video on Reddit today of a kid, well, a teenager that won some kind of sweepstakes, sweepstakes associated with the Tomb Raider franchise. So whatever, whatever publisher or whatever game studio Tomb Raider was at the time sent a, a real life uh, Tomb Raider cosplayer to his house, got him the new Tomb Raider game. They installed it. She watched him play it. They talked about stuff. I don't know, man. The <laughs> 90s were a time. So I'm going to take a look right here because nothing's happening here, right? We hatched first again. Jadong did. Nothing crazy from him. Uh, on the other side, got a gas and a barracks coming up here. So let's see. Tomb Raider franchise. Let's see. B -b created by British gaming company Core Design, formerly owned by Eidos Interactive and by Square Enix Europe. Ah, okay. In 2009, though. So, like, back in the day, it was Eidos, Eidos Interactive. I don't know actually how to say that. I, I recognize their logo. I know who they are. They did a ton of stuff, but... Yeah, anyway, that's who it was. Pretty good cosplayer, too, honestly. Like, honestly, as far as, like, a real-life Lara Croft goes... I think she looks more like Lara Croft than, like, Angelina Jolie did in her movie. Or, I mean, obviously, Alicia Vikander, the more recent Lara Croft, who is, uh, you know, um, not exactly the, the, the early video game style of protagonist, at least visually. I love Alicia Vikander. She's incredibly hot. Like, holy crap. But, I'm just saying, she doesn't quite have the um, Tomb Raider body type from the late 90s. And you know, that's an intentional choice by the game developers uh, and by the people making the movies as well, right? Right. We're living in a different time now than what 1998 was. Time keeps marching. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, also, man, if you haven't seen Ex Machina, what a great movie. Oscar Isaac's in there killing it. We got Alicia Vikander in there killing it. Like, literally. If you have, um, That's my movie recommendation of the day is Ex Machina. Don't watch... The Tomb Raider movies. Although, I don't know. I've heard decent things about the more recent ones. Again, with Vikander. So, maybe it's not that bad. Anyway. Enough rambling about pop culture, Falcon. Second base on the way from JYJ. Got his factory up before the second base. So, not a one racks expand play. Going for faster, mechy style stuff here. Which, uh, you know, seems interesting. But yeah, here we go. Jadong, looking good, going for a lair, going for damn mutalisks. He is, according to Liquipedia, the person who developed the two-base mutalisk play against Terran, which is just as standard as anything can ever be in the history of StarCraft. What else? Are we going back here, or is this opening... Vulture speed coming out this fast really feels to me like it's going to be a second factory here very soon. So we're going to watch that production tab. We're going to keep an eye on that. Oh, that's an armory too? Yeah, man. And he's lifting the barracks. Okay, it's Mac. 
It's mech. A modern game with mech? Dude, I feel like every single CPT that I cast that's more recent than, I mean, anything in the last five years, right? 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22 has just been SK Terran on some level, something along those lines. Mecha's, it was really popular back in, you know, the late 2000s, the 2010s. We see all, I cast a bunch of games where there was mech happening or, you know, barracks transitions into mech. But wow, this is a recent game, relatively recent game, where we're seeing mech opening. JYJ, you absolute boss. I love it. I'm on board. There's that second factory. Beautiful, beautiful stuff here. So let's see how it works, right? There's a reason everybody went away from it. <laughs> Yo, good hold there. Got this, uh, interestingly enough, the spire at the front to help wall off, and the sunken did a ton of work there. Interesting. Also, macro hat. Are there two macro hatches? Where's the third? <gasps> ninja third. Ninja third. J Dong's getting a ninja third. Dude. All right, look, so it's Mutalisks, neat. And if you're going back to deal with Mutalisks, get what you gotta make, Goliaths. Behold, the shiny chrome of Goliaths. I like it. Very Mech Warrior of it here, right? Very inspired by Mech Warrior. I mean, inspired by Warhammer too, because everything in StarCraft is inspired by Warhammer. I'm not going down that rabbit hole, but you know it. You should Google StarCraft Warhammer someday if you wanna have, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, right? Right. Are we taking another base? I like this. Jadong's like, yo, you're two base mech shenanigering here. Tell you what, I'm gonna get four bases on you in the first six minutes of this game. What you gonna do about that? How are you gonna punish it, huh? And I don't know, he might be thinking back too to the time when Advocat, the Russian player, beat him in a WCG event. <laughs> By going Mass Goliath off of two bases and just kind of ruining Jadong's day and taking the map. So uh, that's a possibility here. Mass Goliath against someone who gets a little bit too greedy and tries to go four hatch at seven minutes. Maybe not, um, you can't have the best defense against some kind of a Goliath attack, right? Right. But, I don't know, we're moving into more vultures here. Again, we got vulture speed. Spider mines getting researched, vehicle weapons on the way here too. Jadong just trying to really use Mutalisks for the most part here. And look, yes, Mutalisks only take half damage from Goliaths. But Goliaths with Garon Boost hit you for four times before you close on them. So it's just, again, it's just a question of range versus melee. And I know technically Mutalisks have a range of like two, but come on, it might as well be melee. It's like Archons. Archons have a range better than zero, but it really... Is it really, though? I don't know. I like this Mutaflock for picking off spider mines in the middle of the map. I'm not going to say no about that, but it helps if your overlords have the speed upgrade, which they do not. Yeah, Muta is getting the Carapace upgrade for him because that really helps extra against the attacks of the Goliaths, which they're going to have to deal with here sooner rather than later. I don't I don't know that JYJ has checked this this little ninja. It's a very odd place for Jadong to expand. I don't think I've seen anybody try to pull this off on this map, and I've cast a bunch of games on Neo Sylphid, so, hmm, hmm, dude, it is nine more Mutalisks, all right, man, it's gonna be all the Mutas known to Zerg kind here, against, you know, Goliaths and stuff, oh, this Vulture comes in, beautiful scout, and by that I mean he stops, wait, no, he's coming in, okay, so he sees that there's not a hive, and he sees there's not a queen's nest, so he's like, okay, this has got to be... Muta Lurker. It can't be any Dark Swarm anytime soon, so that's good for me. Goliaths are going to be good no matter what. Because the Goliaths are fairly well negated by Dark Swarm, right? So, I'm curious. I'm actually a little bit curious to see when he starts going for Hive Tech. It seems like he's really confident in Mutalisks with plus one Carapace and plus one Attack, and he's making five more. Yeah, he's got a lot of Mutalisks. So many. 
He's trying to engage here, but there's Goliaths on all sides. Beautiful splits, honestly. Pretty good surround there on the Goliaths. And look, their buddies are coming over. Look, again, they can hit them from forever away. Oh my gosh. All right, well, uh, fairly well. More Mutalisks joining the party. I mean, way more than this little window can handle. Oh wait, maybe that is all of them, I don't know. Perhaps it is, perhaps it isn't. It's hard to tell sometimes. They stack. Dude, this space, this space is so key for Jane Hong. Look at it. Look, bask in its glory. Irradiate on the way, because if your opponent's making all the Mutalisks known to Zerg kind, Irradiate's good. It's really good. I mean, you know, unless the Zerg player can split perfectly, which Jadong probably could. I don't know, man. Yeah, look, Jadong says the answer to Mask Goliath from my enemy Terran is all of the Mutalisks I can afford with all of the gas that I have available, which is four gas right now, mind you. So it's a lot. It is a lot of mutas. And here we go again. Look, you can just like one volley down turrets. Or, man, not... Oh, Irradiate is up, though. Okay. All right. Get out of there. What's Irradiate not split off perfectly? Oh, no. And once again, JYG's like, I'm only two base in it, but I'm doing all right, you know? What am I got? I, I got 85 total supply, 53 workers on two bases, which is probably too many. I really wish I knew if JYJ knew about this base, because it would really help inform his opinions as to how this game is going. I'm sure he knows this one's up, probably. Or like, yeah. this is another place. Yeah, this is another place the Zerg could expand to a third base or a fourth base. But that just has one narrow ramp to defend, so it's pretty nice for Zerg that way, right? Right. Quick reminder to hit that like button. Also, check out the merch at falconpaladin.store. Man, we've got hoodies out there. Two separate types of hoodies. Neat stuff. We have t-shirts. We just added two new t-shirts to the store just a few days ago. One of them is hidden. One of them is very clearly available, but the other one you might have to hunt around for a little bit. It's like an Easter egg hunt a little bit, except, you know, it's November. Anyway, check it out. FalconPaladin.store. We ship anywhere on Earth. We take any currency, almost. I don't think we take North Korea's currency or ship there, but most places we totally do. FalconPaladin.store. There's hats and mugs and pillows, which is a weird thing to sell, kind of, but it's neat, fun stuff is what it is. Anyway, Vulture's getting into the third base. Don't do a lot. Hydras, Mutas, and... Sunkins are all pretty good at dealing with Vultures altogether. Do we have Overlord Speed yet? No. Working on it. This poor guy. I think this is Terry. What's up, Terry? Enjoying your vacation over the water. So then, JYJ is like, all right, uh, who needs a third base? In fact, let's... Oh, man, Jadon's taking another base? He's going to five bases, boys. Five. <sighs> All right. Well, um, I don't, I don't know. Is Jadong over expanding? Is that hurting him? Man, Overlord's getting picked off, but at least they're relaying information as to where JYJ is, and he is floating a third base down. Oh, it's Queens, dude. Seriously, this series is gonna have Guardians and Queen usage against Mech. What a just an outlier. Just an outlier of games already in games one and two. Now, here's the thing. Jadong has so much gas, he can really afford to make a ton of queens. And he is. He's making nine of them right now. Uh, if you're researching Spawn Broodling, I'd be really shocked if he wasn't, I guess. Hey, Overlord Speed is done. Hooray! Is there more Vulture stuff happening? I'm still wondering... If JYJ knows about this, he's got he's got to have scanned here or sent a vulture up here at some point. And then like, yeah, like the sunken killed it, but he has the intel. The intel? He has the intel at that point. Emphasizing the wrong syllable is fun sometimes. Especially when it's on accident and you sound really educated. Spawn broodling getting researched. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful spell. We do not see it ever. 
on the channel. Not ever, but, you know, sometimes we do. And it's it's cool when it comes out. It's one of my... It's honestly... If you told someone who didn't know anything about StarCraft, there's this game, and there's a spell that insta-kills most ground things. Right? You'd be like, man, that's got to get researched all the time. That's got to be a really common spell. Then you'd be like, nope. It's, it's used like, I don't know. It's never used against Protoss. And it's used against Terran once every blue moon. And they'd be like, wow. And they're like, yeah. Part of it is it's insanely expensive. And it kind of has to be because it's so good. But then it's so expensive. Even if you get the queen energy upgrade... It can't cast two spawn broodlings on a single full uh, full energy charge, right? Whereas, you know, High Templar can cast like four storms on a full charge. Queens can go one time with 250 mana, and then they have to wait a bit. And then it's not, it's like wait for 50 mana to re regen. And then you can do it again. It's not the worst thing in the world, but yeah, that's why we don't see queens as much as we probably should. Dude, seriously though, Tino just taking the whole map. And you know, if you're trying to deal with someone mecking you, taking the whole map is a decent way to do it. So three basing Terran. He's got the plus three attack and the plus one armor. Looking hot there. The Hydras have one one. Not really keeping up necessarily on attack upgrades at all. Woo. Okay. All right. All right. This is getting scary all of a sudden. I'm... Uh, J-Dog, did you overexpand a little bit? These Hydras are like, okay, bust the third base. Kill the third base of the Terran. Prevent him from continuing his malicious attack on us. And then SCVs are like, no, buy time. Buy time to save the command center. Oh my gosh, so many workers are dying though. Okay, irradiating the Hydras is beautiful. And yeah, these plus three Goliaths and tanks are doing serious work. So that's a lot of dead Hydra corpses is what I'm saying. And then the spawn brutaling is coming down while we're at it. They're taking out a few of the tanks. There are still five of them on the map right here, though. Additional Goliaths just killing Overlords. Trying to supply block Jadong. Not working too well. He's got 179 available supply. 23 more Hydras on the way. Hydras to deal with the Goliaths. The Siege Tanks are the problem, though. Right? Right. Dude, Jadong, even if he loses this, he's got so many other bases. It really shouldn't matter, right? 169 to 166 supply. JYJ making his move here. The, oh, the queens are irradiated. They're trying to get all their work done here. They're trying to use high ground. They're getting massacred, though. That's not good. So many dead hydralisks at the front of this battle. And all of a sudden, it's 151 to 137 supply. Jadong is producing 11 more hydras at a time because he can afford to do that. I don't know if those scourger... I guess they were hunting for that science vessel, but uh, they missed badly. Siege tanks sieging up. Another round of Hydras trying to deal with plus three siege tanks. The Mutas are jumping on too, baby. Can they kill all of the tanks before the Goliaths kill all of them? The answer is one of the tanks is down. They're fighting. They're not even really attacking the tanks, are they? No. Goliaths not. Are they holding their own? They're holding their own here with three, two upgrades. The Mutas just, they're dead. They took a lot of stuff with them, which was nice. But yo, the Spire just went down. This macro hatch is going to die. The third base is dead. More reinforcing Terran units coming down. He saved the third base. The Sim City is hot. And the answer seems to be for Jadong here. More Hydras, which he's just, he's outnumbered massively now. 138 to 90 supply. And that's it. Jadong taps out in 18 minutes and 20 seconds. That was awesome. That was so good. That was such a great game from JYJ. Dude, Jadong had all of the bases on this map. And JYJ was like, all I need is three. I guess he has a fourth base over here now. Just need three. Going to get incredible upgrade timings. Going to make tanks. Going to make Goliaths. Going to make vultures. Gonna You're going to go queens to try to deal with it. You're going to fail. And then I'm going to win. Yeah, a lot of tanks died. But the ones that didn't reap some major benefits. 10 kills, 8 kills, 9 kills, 11 kills. This guy, uh, these are all new, so they don't have any kills. But, you know, Goliath, 9-kill Goliath, 2... Oh, wait, no, just one 9-kill Goliath, a 4-kill Goliath. No, it is two 9-kill Goliaths. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. 
seriously paying for themselves there. Just top notch. Top notch plays from JYJ to tie this series up like an absolute boss. And Mech gets a win. This is the second time in two weeks Mech's gotten a win against Zerg on the channel. Dude, Mech is. When Mech is Mech, I don't know. Mech is good when it's good. Yes, thank you for the obvious, obvious sentiment, Falcon. You're incredible, but yo. Muta Hyder Queen just was not enough. It drops. When I've seen um when I've seen Zerg players pull this off before, it's usually drops. But I don't know, maybe the Goliath count was heavy enough that that wasn't really viable. 152,000 points from JYJ, 125 from Jadong. He outproduced the Terran player by 359 to 239, but got out killed on a 2 to 1 ratio. That's your problem. Resources. Yeah, Jadong outresourced the Terran by full 7,000 res in only 7,000 in only 18 minutes. But, you know, mech is the cost efficient. And those queens did not do as much as they needed to, I guess, is how I would express this. So, just well done. JYJ ties it up. Let's go. Let's go game three. We get a game three in this best of three. Not a guarantee, but sometimes it is. So we'll be right back with that. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Game three is here on a match point. A pretty fun map. A bottom left going to be Jadong. Top right going to be JYJ. Yeah, this is kind of a weird map. You're vertically expanding on the right side or the left side, depending on where you spawn. This is your second base. And sometimes this is your third base. It's mineral minerals only. But if you want to go here or here, it's super far away. And this base, man, you can set up tanks out here and shell the base. So I kind of feel like this is a Terran favored map. But Jadong is used to that because uh, he's been around for a very, very long time. And wide open spaces here to get surrounds. So I don't know. There are some Terran favored aspects and some Zerg favored aspects as well. Uh, uh. Two ways to get up into these bases and just a narrow choke here. But again, guardians here, tanks here. These are very, very hard to take and very, very hard to hold as well. So are we going to see more mech? I don't know. Again, thank RJB. Thank RJB for these replays. Check him out on YouTube at RJB TV. He does a lot of fastest map. He has a lot of contacts in the Brood War scene. Boo, boo, chicka, chicka, boo, boo. And do, do, do. Not hatch firsting it, it's an over pool and drone scouting. All right, so this is a game three. Winner take all, loser go home. So maybe this is a proxy hatch. Oh, Jadong, a Jadong proxy hatch. Oh my gosh, I'd be so excited. Let's go. Dude, maybe it is. Maybe it is. He just extractor tricked to get 10 supply out of 9 available. Dude. Okay, no. He's just going to send the drone right on in and just be like, blah, 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 blah. I'm a harassing you. Come chase me, please. And that SCV is like, all right, fine, I'll do it. Huh. I guess he just didn't want to get proxied. Because that's really... That early of a drone scout really only gives you that information. Is the barracks coming up at home? Yes. Is there gas on the way? I guess that's good information too. Is there gas on the way? Interesting. Gas on the way usually indicates we're going to go for a factory after the barracks. Oh, drone gets killed. That's not good. That's not good for Jadong. Got a bunch of lings out. And this SCV says, I'd like to scout, gentlemen. And they're like, no... Oh, they jumped him. They jumped him so hard. Okay, rest in peace. Rest in peace, little guy. Wow, that was awesome. Okay, well, yeah, look, it is a factory. Behold, quick factory. This is almost like a PBT build. From our guy. So we're just going to send these lings out. La 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 la. Which he knows about. Because that SCV got murdered by these dudes. About 30 seconds ago. So that's why there's SCVs off the line. And these marines are like. Hold it. Nope. Not really doing great with that. Marines are dying. But SCVs are holding. And lings are getting zapped as well here. By the little fusion cutters these guys have. 
Oh, an SCV died. He's got oh, it's two Jadonglings inside your base. Bad. Bad for you. They each have tasted blood as well. That's horrible. But Marines do have guns. And anything with a range is pretty good against Zerglings, it turns out. Unless, you know, you can't shoot down like Devourers, I suppose. Or Corsairs, but yeah. Alright, so Daydong's like, alright, early Ling pressure, killed a couple SCVs. Economy's not as hot as it could be, but you know what? My economy was hot in the last game, and it didn't really do anything for me. So, <laughs> Lair's on the way. Pretty quick uh, creep colony up here as well. He is worried about vultures, right? Slow lings are not an answer to vultures, man. Oh, he's trying to delay with these drones. Oh my gosh. Ah! Any drone devs at this stage of the game are just abysmal. And like I said, slow lings aren't for this. Slow lings were built for other... Oh, do not lose this vulture to drones. Come on, man. JYJ, if you're going to win this series, you do not lose this vulture to drones. Oh, losing to a sunken is viable, though. Fair enough. So, sunken. Oh, okay. Well, two vultures died to that sunken. Way to go, man. You are definitely worth whatever you were paid to to be. Are we opening two port wraith? Is this the second port? Is that what this is? He Overlord sees there's not a second base coming up, but now there is from JYJ. Interesting. It is wraith play, though. Dude, so we're getting Wraith play, Guardian play, and Queens with Spawn Broodling in this series. Amazing. Like, truly incredible stuff here today. This is great. I don't have a lot of Jadong ZVTs, so this has been a super treat. Yo. Yeah, if you don't want to support me on Patreon, I understand some people have some ideological opposition to the platform. You can become a member here by clicking the join button down below. It gives you a green name, gives you nice little icons next to it, gives you access to extra emojis that regular people, regular subs do not. That starts as just as little as a couple bucks a month as well. And one-time donations are also available just by clicking the thanks button below the video too. And then finally, PayPal. Some people really like using PayPal. They've, they're used to it. It's been a thing for oh, 20 years now. Maybe even more than that. So I'm just falconpaladin at gmail.com under PayPal. As this Wraith gets a drone kill, gets two drone kills, really. Because there's not a Hydralisk den, and the Spire's not done yet. So this totally sucks for Jadong. This is like the worst thing for Jadong right here. Do, 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 do. Make an extractor, go. And then these vultures come in, and the Lings try to body block them, but all three of them make it inside. Yo! And Jadong taps out on JYJ! Wins the best of three in six and a half minutes. Not even. Six hours, six minutes and 20 seconds. Just the Wraith shows up, starts picking away at all of his poor, poor, poor drones. Three vultures with speed get into the main. There's not a sunken down here. Dude, I have to see what his worker count was at the end there because he GG'd out. Oh, yeah, there's just... There's not a lot down. It's 13 to 25 workers right now. Yeah... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. What a build. Like, what a sick build here. From JYJ. The Vulture harasses... Oh, he's trying to body block. That would have that would have been... I think he would have stayed in if he could have managed to body block those Vultures and kill him along with the help of the Sunken there. But even then, man, the Spire's done. There's Scourge on the way, but... You're already down. Uh, your opponent has twice as many workers as you do. You don't have a third base. You don't have a ton of gas either. Look at this. There's 300 gas. I mean, he already spent 100 on a Muta and like 50 on Scourge. So, or 25 on Scourge. Anyway, Scourge are cheap. But the point is, yeah, he doesn't really have enough Mutas to kill these things quickly. There's no Sunkins down here. All these drones are going to get focused. He's going to be under 10 workers post haste. Like really fast, right? So yeah, that's a fair tap out. Dang, after those first two long macro games, I'm really shocked. This one ended at six minutes. I'm really trying to not look at the length of the replay when I start them, and it's been nice. So yeah, that was kind of out of nowhere. And yeah, the early Ling pressure, I think Jadong invested a little too much, too much into those Lings and didn't get much done with it. I think he was hoping to kind of catch JYJ off guard if he'd killed all the Marines and there were still like five or six Lings remaining. Then suddenly the SCV count just takes a serious hit. And JYJ is in a massive amount of trouble, but the defense was good enough. And that's a win, so pow! Kapow! 
10,000 points there for JYJ. 8,000 points for Jada. Again, short games, right? They're short games. 18 to 8 kill death ratio for JYJ is pretty good. Pretty similar numbers of units there. Structures raised. Nobody killed any buildings today. And yeah, our guy JYJ, just 4,000 to 3,000 resources. About 1,000 more resources spent in just six minutes, which it's a lot. That extrapolates out to a pretty heavy, uh, heavy difference if the game goes on for like 30 minutes, right? Right. Yeah, that was incredible. Like, that was really a fantastically great, super fun TVZ. Thanks again, RJB, and that's going to be it from me. So this is Ben Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered and a Best of Three. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.